As you may or may not know, your Cricut is more than a cutting machine, it's also a crazy writing machine. If you love the handwritten look, but you hate your handwriting or the hand cramps that it comes with, Cricut's got your back. You just pop in a pen, set your design to draw in Cricut Design Space, and click that go button. Now, it's not really that easy, of course, but almost. I'm gonna share with you all of my Cricut pen and marker tips and tricks so you can get compliments on your handwriting too. <laughs> so first, how does it work? How does your Cricut come, um, how does it have the ability to even write? So let me show you, I'm gonna switch on over to my Cricut. So this is my Cricut Explore 3. All of the Cricuts have this ability so that you know, right? But we're gonna demonstrate on this one. And let's open it up. So your Cricut comes with two tool clamps. There's clamp A, and it says A on it, and there's clamp B. Now, if you have the Cricut Joy, you have just one clamp, but it can still use pens and markers. If you have the Cricut Explore 1, which is an older, earlier one, most people don't have it, but if you do, that also only has one clamp, but you can still use pens in it. You just have to get the adapter. This right here, this adapter, it comes with most Cricuts. Right, so um, the older, the Explore one, you do have to buy it. I don't know many people that have that one anymore. The Joy does not need an adapter, it's ready to go. So, but otherwise you should have this adapter in there. And then most of you will have gotten a black fine point pen with your Cricut. It came with the Cricut Explore Air, Air 2, original maker. It didn't come with the Explore 3 or Maker 3. The Joy also had one, yes. Um, but you know, this is the basic pen right here. Um, so let me show you how it works. So we just open up clamp A. We take the, I want you to see what the pen looks like. You see this? So the pen looks like this. It says Cricut on it. Uh, if it goes in your machine, it'll have this arrow on it. You take off the cap. I like to put it in with the arrow facing me like this because as you put it in, I always also hold the bottom, right? Like this, you'll hear it click, right? The, the Cricut pens will click. And then you close your clamp like this. And you put your cap on the top so you don't lose it. <laughs> like me. And that's how we put a pen or marker. It works the same way into our Cricut. So clamp A is for your markers. And what's cool about this is that it can then draw and then it can cut or whatever you put in this clamp. It can do both without you having to change them which I love because that means I don't have to go over there and do that. So basically clamp A is for accessories, A for accessories, <laughs> that's what I always think. And that's where we put all of our pens and markers, okay? So when we're done with our pen and marker, be sure to remove it and put it away. And I recommend that you store your pens either on their side like this, or um, you can put them right into your little, little container back here, and, but store them tip down, okay? And an important tip, always test your pens on a piece of scrap paper. Um, here's one right here. We're going to use this one. So scrap paper. Oops, you can't see. Sorry. <laughs> so all before you put it into your Cricut, always test it to make sure that it's flowing. Um, if it's a new pen or an older pen, sometimes they need to be primed a little bit. You want to do the priming before you put them into your Cricut and it starts trying to write with it because while it will prime itself, it'll do it while it's doing your project. So the first part of your project could be like super light, you know, until it, 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 it fills in, right? So there's no, you know, you don't want to do that. You don't want to mess it up because then you, you can always go back and do it by hand, but then that negates the purpose of using your Cricut. So always prime them in advance, okay? And I know many of you will say, oh, well, okay, Cricut makes all these pens. What about other pens? So I have a whole tutorial on that. It is over at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut dash writing. Uh, so I tested a whole bunch of different ones. Um, and the easy answer is that it is sometimes possible and sometimes not. For example, this is a Cratology pen. I don't remember what, where I got this from. Maybe Michael's, maybe Amazon, I don't know. Um, anyways, it is possible. I will give you an example. So it's similar, the barrel diameter is similar to the Cricut's, you see there. And so I can put it in to my Cricut. It will not click, right? 
Um, and you do want to test to make sure that it's at, can you see down there? That it's actually going to write, right? Because it's, because it's not a Cricut pen, you're not going to get that nice little click sound that we usually hear. <laughs> um, and you, there's no guarantee that it will stay in there properly or write as well. But I have tested and I know that other people use them. And you can even sometimes use pencils. So here's a colored pencil. So, so you'll notice it touched there, but you can usually bring it up a little bit. And then once you clamp it, it tends to stay in place. What you are not going to want to do is force anything. You wouldn't want to avoid your Cricut warranty, right? So I really recommend that you use Cricut pens and markers because there's so many of them. So I want to focus on them, in fact, for our video today, because there's it's there's so many of them that Cricut makes now, a lot more than when I did my first tutorial where I like tried a bunch of different things. Uh, there's, I think they've introduced like six different kinds of pens and markers since then. And when you use a Cricut pen or marker, you don't have to worry about it fitting in your machine. They come in a lot of different sizes and types, I like to recommend that folks start with the multi-pen set, which is right here. This is the multi-pen set. This is a great place to begin if you are new uh, to Cricut pens. So what it comes with is it comes with a, a 0.4 tip pen. This is this one right here. So this is the standard pen that you probably already have, um, but if not, there it is. <laughs> and it's got this 0.8 tip glitter gel pen. So and this is this one's all black. You can get them in silver and gold too. I have a gold one right here. I've had these for quite a while. I love them. They all still work. I've had them for years since the very beginning. Um, and then it comes with a 1.0 tip marker, which is this one right here. I love using this one. I used it yesterday if you were with me. When yeah, yesterday when we made our uh, sweet signature cards. And then these are 2.0 2 uh, tip calligraphy markers. So these actually have a chisel tip on them. Here, here's a good example. Here, this shows you exactly what it looks like. So it's got a chisel tip on it and you can use it to make um, calligraphic like things. Uh, and in my video that I referenced earlier, it actually shows you how to put them in so you can get the nice thick and thin that you see in normal traditional calligraphy, what angle to put it at, all that kind of thing. So this is a great place to begin if you are new to Cricut pens and markers and you're not sure, you know, because you can experiment with all these. I kind of like this one the best because you can do all the fancy things with it because it's gold metallic. All right, and then we get into all the other sorts of pens. So most people then move towards the extra fine point pens. Uh, these are really good for things like cards. This is more like what a ballpoint pen would be, like if you were signing your signature or putting a sentiment in a card or something like that. And this is the ultimate fine point set with all the colors. Well, pretty much, I'm sure there's some missing, but there's a lot of colors. I have a couple of these, I really like them. You can actually get the ultimate set both in uh, in a couple different like uh, sizes, right? So this is a nice place to begin if you like to use pens. And they all work the same way. See that little arrow there? So you can put them right into your Cricut, really easy to use. Cricut, and I want to note something, Cricut always ships, displays, you know, packages their markers like this. As soon as you get home, like put them like this or, you know, store them like this <laughs> um, because that then you're when you're ready to use them, they're ready to go, right? Don't just keep them like this in there, you know, standing up because all the ink just kind of gravity just pulls that ink down and then you have to do more priming. Or if you forget to prime, then you're like, oops, you might have to redo something. Um, so this is the fine point set, but you can also get extra fine point, oops, this, extra fine point. So with a 0.3 tip. So really small and tiny. I have a couple of these here. I think these are older, but they still work. They're still awesome. There is a shelf life to pens, but it depends. And I find that some pens have longer shelf lives than others. Um, I like the like these regular pens like this. These tend to last the longest. And then when we talked about we get when we get to infusible ink, those are the ones I tend I see that are a little 
more likely to like dry out, right? There's still ink in there, but it's like something happened. Um, but so these, they last a really long time. These are probably, probably five years old. <laughs> All right. And then something that's uh, newer are, they've had glitter gel pens, but they came out with new glitter gel pens. So there's glitter gel pens like this and these, and they make these for both the Explore, Maker, and Joy. So as far as I know, everything is available for all the machines. The only one that's currently missing is, that I know of, is there is a new permanent marker that's available on a Joy that's not yet available for the Explore and Maker. But I asked about it, I asked Cricut about it, and they said that they were hoping to bring it out. So permanent marker, right? So, uh, but yet yeah, these are really pretty gel pens. And then they have opaque gel pens. These are new. So you can use these on dark, uh, paper and get just gorgeous, really, really pretty. I bought a bunch of those cause they're new. And now I, I don't want you to confuse. These two look so similar to me. Let's actually bring out this one. Uh, trying to get them all these. I guess we're not going to have a neat. <laughs> so these are opaque gel pens. They look really similar to these. So if you go to the store and see these, these are not opaque, but they are milky. So they're more opaque than usual, but not as opaque as these. So, and this one has a white opaque gel pen in it, which is amazing on black or dark colors, like, you know, dark red. I just love it. So just so that you don't get confused there. And then that brings us to infusible ink. So there's also infusible ink pens. So Cricut infusible ink is a kind of sublimation ink. You've heard me talk about sublimation. It's so cool. Um, it, you can transfer it to sublimation friendly surfaces like polyester, and it will infuse right into the surface and stay there forever. <laughs> or, you know, as long as the shirt lasts. Um, so they make pens so you can just use your Cricut to write with them. Or, you know, you can just do it by hand, of course. And uh, so here they come in pens and markers. This is, this is some marker. Uh, this is a marker also, but like you can always tell, like if you ever are in doubt about um, your, your, like it came out of your package, let's see if we can get this to focus for us. Here we go. We can do this. There we go. So it says on there what you, what you're, and also at the back on the end of it right here, it tells you. So M stands for marker, right? In fact, I'm going to pull up a whole bunch of these so you can see. Not this one. Some of these are weird. Let's pull these out. There we go. Let's see if these focus for us. There we go. So look at the bottom of these. So if you have them on their side, which I love to store my on their side, you can tell at a glance whether it's fine points, F is fine points, M is marker, G is glitter or gel. I don't know, one of the two. Let's see uh, this one. A gel pen, right? So in fact, let me show you one of the ways that I do this. I'm going to switch over to here. Behind me, I have my dream box and I have, I store, I keep my pens usually in there, the ones I use on a regular basis, they're in there because they're in the little tool cubby. So let me, I haven't opened this at all during uh, Merry Maker Mingle, but I have things in here today. So we're gonna get it out. Isn't this awesome? I love my dream box. Let's just get this open. They're having a Christmas sale right now, by the way, you can save $200 off these. I'm happy to tell you more about that if you would like. So, but we'll, we're talking about pens right now. So here are my pens and I like to store them on the side like this. And then I can see at a glance what everything is because I can see the color and I can see the, the type, you know, whether it's M or F or whatever. So it works really well. I have a couple non-cricket ones up here, but see, this is, this is awesome. This is the, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the name of this. This is from Create Room, the makers of the Dream Box. And it is the, I think it's the Tool Caddy. I'm, forgive me, I, I'm, Maybe, can someone on my team look this up to give me the name of it? Because I'm drawing a blank on just what it's called. I guess I could look it up real quick. In fact, since we're talking about the Dreambox, we'll just head on over there and look right now. Um, 
Oh, someone's looking for me, so I don't have to do that. I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll be patient. Anyway, so I've got them all stored in here on their sides, right? So either store them on their side or tip down for the best results. Tool Cubby, it's called Tool Cubby, yeah. So, <laughs> so um, now for infusible ink pens, let me just show you something real quick. This is important too. So let's go back to the overhead. So they come in pens. These are pens and these are markers. Pens are finer, markers are thicker, right? So the pens are 0.4 tip and the markers are 1.1 1. 1 point tip. They also sell, and so this is important that you pay attention to, uh, they sell freehand markers. They look like this. Uh, they don't all have the dual tip, but most of them do. And it says freehand marker. I wanna call these out because they will not fit in your Cricut. They will not fit there and you they will not go into the pen adapter, right? So these are for drawing by hand and then transferring over to your shirt or your mug or whatever. You don't draw on the surface. You still wanna draw on a piece of like laser copy paper and then you transfer it over. I have lots of tutorials on how to use the Cricut pens and markers too. All right, and I think I have most, uh, oh, there's one important one that I've forgotten. They make a washable fabric pen that you can use for when you're sewing or something like that, or, you know, something where you want to put on your, your, mark your seam allowance, and then it just washes out just like any other washable fabric pen. And it's actually one of the great things about using the Cricut to cut material is that you can put your seam allowance marking on it right away so you know exactly where to cut it instead of having to do it by hand or something. So washable fabric pen. And then, can't forget, the Cricut watercolor markers and brush set. So these are really new. These are the newest ones I'd say, along with like the opaque gel pens. These came out around the same time. So the watercolor markers and brushes, the markers fit in your Cricut. The brush is, by, is for using after your Cricut draws with the markers and you blend by hand, right? And so you start out like this and you end up after you use the, the brush pen like this. And these are super cool and you make this gorgeous uh, thing. And it's so cool how your Cricut does the drawing for you, right? Or whatever it is, the writing for you, like with our hello cards, right? So that you don't have to worry about getting it perfect because your Cricut can get it perfect for you. <laughs> I think that, I think that's awesome. And I think that's, I don't think I'm missing any. There are lots of colors, so I haven't showed you every color. Uh, there's some card, there's some sets like these sort of sets right here. You'll find some unusual colors in them. So that's you know if you're looking for something, the smaller sets they'll have like special ones. But if you're really looking for every color, you know every or you know most colors, the Ultimate Pen Set has a lot of colors in it, and it's a really good, it's a good thing to have if you're really into pens and markers. It's got questions for me about pens and markers. I would love to help you out and answer them. Let's put this down here. I guess I could put it back in my dream box while I'm waiting for your questions and answers. See, it fits right in here, isn't this cool? So you can take it out and, and move it around and everything. Okay. Uh, Deborah says, do you store the Cricut pens on this side? I do, as you saw, yes. Uh, Sherry says, will infusible ink pens do something like this is what I think you're asking. Uh, it'll draw it, it'll, but it won't blend it, right? It'll look like this if you use infusible ink pens. You might still like this, but it's not going to blend, right? It's not going to make this beautiful effect that we get with the watercolor pens. Uh, does the, Joanna asks, does the adapter come out? It does, yes. Let's show me, show you. So here's the adapter. It does. I don't take it out um, because there's no need to, but it will come out. And if you damage it, because sometimes when you try to force other pens in here, uh, it will. There's like a little plastic clip in there, and it'll kind of break off. Now it doesn't really prevent you from ever using it again. But if you really like hearing that click, let me demonstrate that again. So here's our pen. That click, if you really like hearing that, 
because it does give you an audible confirmation that you have it in the right spots, then you can buy a new adapter, <laughs> right? So they sell, Cricut sells the adapters, but yes, they come out. Like you could just pull it out if you wanted to, but I don't, I never take my adapter out uh, because there's, I have no need to, but they do come out and they are replaceable. Linda says, can you use the infusible ink pens like this on sublimation paper? Absolutely. Uh, what Cricut recommends is that you use laser copy paper. You don't have to use the more expensive sublimation paper, but if that's all you have, you can totally use them. Um, I don't think that it's necessary to use sublimation paper. I think laser copy paper works just fine in the case of the infusible ink pens and markers. Debbie asks, how do you prime a pen? I will show you again. For a different piece of paper here. Here we go. One that doesn't have writing on it. So here is uh, just a little file folder I have. So to prime a pen, you just uncap it and you just do a little thing like this. If you look at my projects, you might see a little scribble like any pen project. I pretty much will always just do this. So I'll use the same pen and the same paper before I put it in my machine and then I know it's flowing, right? Because sometimes when you do this, it, uh, you know, it's all, it just, it seems like it's dried out, but it needs a little gravity and a little pressure to bring the ink down to the tip, right? Here's our pen. Let's get that to focus for us, right? So the pet ink comes out here. This is a little, it's a little tiny sort of fibrous tip there. And so if we're you're storing them like this, the ink is flowing down and it cannot, it's not saturating that tip, right? So we want to really be storing them on their sides or like this so that the ink is ready to go. <laughs> so, but you can prime them first if you need to. And I just always do it as a habit. In fact, what, something that you can do a little tip here is on your Cricut, you can put a a good place for it, I'm gonna slide my Cricut over, is right here. Put a little piece of paper or writable vinyl right here, and you can always then just sort of scribble. It says, it's also a reminder to test your pens before you put them in your Cricut, right? This is a good spot for it right here because it's nice and flat. Peggy says, how many projects do you have for pens? I don't know, but there's quite a few. Uh, at least over a dozen different projects, whether it's just learning how to use the pens and markers, or like I have one, my very first one I think was on how to address envelopes with it. We recently did one in November, all about how to write inside cards and write on envelopes, right? So like even store-bought ones, like ones that are already made, right? How to put them on your mat, how to get everything in, you know, in the right spot and you know how to do it including fonts. We've made two writing fonts, one called JM Pen Writing and one called JM Tall, and they're made just for using uh, your Cricut pen or marker in your machine. Uh, those are free on my site at jennifermaker.com. Uh, today's project, our watercolor pen project, uh, we've done infusible ink pen and marker projects, both with the Cricut writing them out and doing it freehand. Uh, lots and lots of things on mugs and on tote bags. Lot, we have a lot of projects. I don't know how many. <laughs> uh, Virginia asks, are the watercolor pens just in the small sets? Yes, right now. But maybe if we all decide that we like wa watercolor pens and buy them, Cricut will make new ones, right? So, or you no know, more, more colors. But these are the, where'd they go? The colors they have right now are, uh, there's eight in here, I think. Nine, there's, there's, no, there's eight plus the water brush. So there's uh, like a magenta-y red. It's kind of, it's, you know, it's not magenta. It's just got a hint of it. Uh, orange, purple, brown, black, green, blue, and yellow. So the basics, because as you can see, it blends and you can make a lot of other colors. So keep that in mind. Maybe we don't need all the colors, but you know, cause look at all the colors that we've created from those eight colors in the Cricut watercolor set. Kim says, do they make the ultimate pen set for the joy? 
I'm not sure. I'm going to go check it out. Uh, we can always just go look. I'm going to head on over to my web browser right now. So Cricut, Cricut Shop. Let's just head there. Just using Google, my favorite. <laughs> All right, so let's see what they have for, for, I think that they have the ultimate pen set for both. I think they do. Let's see. Um, here, here, okay, they have it for, this is all, if it doesn't say it's for Joy, you can always assume it's for Explore or Maker. So here's the pen set, here's the gel pen set, here's the extra fine pen set. So it doesn't look like they make it for Joy, unless it's under some different name. So it looks like it's just for Explore and Maker. Um, but look at all those cool colors. Uh, by the way, if, any, if you are placing a Cricut order, I do have a discount, a 10% discount. I don't think I have my discount code. Is this it? There it goes. It's actually here. <laughs> JenniferMaker.com slash Cricut discount uh, will give you my discount code. It changes regularly, so you can just head on over there to get it, and it will give you 10% off orders over $100. It, this code only works on um, accessories and materials and things like that. It doesn't actually work on Cricuts or Easy Presses or anything like that. All right, let's see here. More questions, I see more questions. Lucy says, do you find that pens dry out fast? No, I don't find that they do at all. I have pens from years and years ago that still work just fine. That said, I hear occasionally from others who have gotten like a set and they find that there's a few in there that have, that have like, um, dried out and I always wonder what's going on. Like, you know, were they stored badly? Were they shipped badly? I don't know. Uh, but that's usually what I hear. Um, I don't, I think I've only had one or two pens actually seem to die on me and they were all infusible ink pens other than my fabric marking pen. <laughs> I, I've done a lot of sewing projects, so I have gone through a, a few of those. <laughs> so, but that, in that case, that wasn't it drying out. That was me using it up. <laughs> Uh, Diana says, should you stand up infusible ink markers the same way upside down? Yes. Um, I just generally recommend it for all, uh, either on their side or like this. Don says, could you use the washable fabric pen to print an embroidery pattern on a Cricut? Would it be transferable? If you, if, yes, but you don't transfer it. You put your fabric, your embroidery fabric onto your mat, tape it down, use the the pink mat or the purple mat, tape it down well so it doesn't like move around. And then you can use your Cricut washable fabric pen to draw your embroidery pattern. Absolutely, lots of people do that. Uh, I have done it once, um, mostly because I haven't been doing as much embroidery since I discovered the Cricut. <laughs> but I actually love to embroider too, both by hand mostly, and I also have an embroidery machine. Cheryl says, what kind of pens work best for writing greetings on Cricut cardstock, which has some texture? So I think the 0.4 tips are the best because that's the one that's going to look the most like a normal pen. That's like the pen that came with your Cricut, that 0.4 tip, right? Like this one, this is a 0.4 tip. Um, if you're having a problem and you're willing to like write it a little bigger, the markers I find flow better. So if you have a very heavily textured cardstock, I think that the markers will flow better onto it. It's just that they're thicker. They're 1.0 tip, right? It's, millim it's in millimeters, so it's a one millimeter tip. So you're gonna have to make your text bigger, otherwise, otherwise it'll all just kind of fill in and look, you know, blotchy or you won't, it'll be harder to read, I think. Are there watercolor pencils that we can use on the Cricut? Uh, not that I know of, right? Uh, I, we haven't tested them. You certainly, if you have them, you could test them, you know, in your Cricut to see if it works out. And then you can let us know over in our Cricut crafters and makers group. We would love to know what would work. Nancy says, are there specific watercolor designs that you have chosen or can you start with any design? They should be specific actually. Uh, and you will see in our tutorial tonight, all about the watercolor pens, how they work. So that you, once you see the tutorial, you'll understand. And remember, they start like this. Let me show you the overhead on this one. 
they start like this and then they end up like this. So I want you to look at this. You can see how uh, they're, this, this is all line drawing, right? Um, it's, and we fill it in with the water brush afterwards. You could certainly try with any design, but the trick, the real trick that we found is that Cricut wants to put the colors on in a particular way, which is not always the best way for watercolor. We really wanna lay down your colors in a particular order so that you don't get weird blending effects, right? So in our designs that we're sharing, we have found, I guess you would call it a hack or whatever, to get the Cricut to draw them in just the ways that we think are appropriate for the best effects. I wish that I could change this about the way Cricut does it, but I don't have that kind of control. So if you use our tutorials, our designs, you're gonna get results like this. A different design is gonna have a different effect. So just keep that in mind, right? You can, of course, experiment and see what you could make, right? Uh, absolutely, but you, I want you to see how pretty specific this design is, right? Cindy says, can you make more SVGs for watercolors? Well, I guess you are all gonna let me know, right? So make these, post photos of them. That's the best way for you to give me feedback that you like something, by the way, is, or, or like, just honestly, if I see a lot of views on a video or I see that a project is being done a lot or you're posting your photos of projects that you've made, that tells me you want more of them and then we will make more of them. That is literally how it works. It's actually really simple. So if you like this, do them and show us. <laughs> and we'll be like, oh, awesome. They like this and they want more because the that is, that is the thing that determines wh what projects we make. Just so you all know, that is it. It is whether you like them or not. Nothing else, there's no, because you know I'm not sponsored by anybody. Everything we do, even though it's it'll be brand names because I'm a brand loyal kind of girl. Um, when I pick something or when I find something, I just stick with it, right? But no one sponsors me, no one pays us to ever do things. So everything is done because you like it. <laughs> you just all really, really like Cricut. I never intended to talk about Cricut as much as I do, but once I got my first Cricut and I began using it and posting my projects, it was overwhelmingly positive. And I'm like, well, I can listen and you guys want more Cricut projects. Because when I started Jennifer Maker, we were doing basic DIY projects, lots of upcycling and stuff like that, which just wasn't as popular. That's the simple truth. And my, the thing that gets me out of bed in the morning and gets me going is uh, inspiring lots of people. That's my thing. It's, it, that is the thing that makes me want to work as hard as I do is being able to reach people. So it's always going to be about how many of you really like something. Uh, Allison says, have you found that the infusible markers don't come out the correct color after heat is applied? Typically, no. I've done actually a bunch of tests on this. I recommend you go and check out my infusible ink pen and marker videos. I have one video where I just put all of the pens and markers on paper and transfer them over to a mug. I have like a, a color mug. Only one of the colors didn't transfer right and it was a red pen. And I think it was just a bad one. So that was one of my two infusible ink markers that I think something was wrong with. I don't know exactly what happened. I don't, don't know, but um, the thing is, Remember, with infusible ink, this is true of sublimation, because this is, you know, infusible ink is a sublimation ink. Um, what you see on the paper is a different color than what gets transferred to your shirt or your mug or whatever. It looks a lot more muted and lighter on the paper, but once you transfer it at the proper heat and the proper pressure, you should see the right color. If you're seeing your blacks turn to brown or your colors get muted after transfer, it usually means you have too much heat and you need to reduce your heat. It's a little, little sublimation tip for you. Uh, Donna says, can we make any draw file and assign them different colors? You can try, right? But I want you to watch our tutorial tonight and see how we have tricked Cricut into doing it in a specific order because it makes a difference. So if you want to try doing it yourself. Now Cricut does have their own watercolor designs. I haven't actually used any of theirs. The truth is, and I mentioned this in the tutorial tonight, that when, so 
I'm sorry to Cricut if you're listening to me and I'm sorry. I apologize in advance to the designer who made the design. So <laughs> when Cricut first came out with the watercolor pens and they showed what you could make with it, I was, I was very underwhelmed and I'm like, I don't want to do that. That doesn't even look cute. I'm sorry, Cricut. <laughs> that is the truth though. I'm like, that is like, whatever. Like it was really boring. Right. And like, it kind of just looked like marker that was a little bit damp or something. <laughs> feel bad saying this because someone designed that right so someone made that so and I never ever want to say anything bad but that is the truth I wasn't impressed by it and uh but I people kept asking about the watercolor pens and markers and so we decided to do a tutorial but we worked very hard at finding a way to make them amazing which I think we did I, I, I really think that we did so so that, that's the truth. So I apologize to the designer who made those. <laughs> I'm going to put away this uh, bar at the bottom. Okay, I feel like I... Um, Al says, actually, here's a question. Sometimes my pens don't stay in the clamp and they miss spots in the design. What am I doing wrong? It might be that your adapter... Let's go back over here. It might be that your adapter here has become damaged or something. Um, like I said, if you try to force something in there that doesn't fit, there's like a little, it's a little lip in there for the pens. And so if that breaks off, they can kind of wobble around in here, right? Also, I guess it's possible that your clamp isn't properly, isn't really tight enough and it's moving. Um, so go to your Cricut and look at this part. Like, is this, does it seem like it's broken? Uh, does this seem like it's tight enough? You know, there might be something going on there. Uh, if it's under warranty still, you can contact Cricut and ask them for help. They're really good about replacing machines if they need to be replaced. If it's not under warranty anymore, you can buy a new adapter. They're over at the Cricut shop, so you can just go get another one. Kimberly says, can you use freehand markers on mugs? You can, but you want to put it onto the, the paper and then transfer that onto your mug. So you'll have to write in reverse. I have a tutorial about how to actually do that to get your words reversed and everything. Uh, so you can do that. Okay, let's see here. Any more questions? If your pen doesn't go in, is it a Cricut pen? Now, remember the Cricut Explorer Maker pens are a different size than the Joy pens. Sometimes people don't realize that and they're trying to put one or the other in that doesn't belong with their machine. So if it's a Cricut pen and it still doesn't fit in your machine, look at it. It'll say, if it's a, if it's a Joy pen, it will say on it. Or if it's not a Joy pen, it will, won't say it's a Joy pen. That's what you're looking for, right? If you're using a Cricut Joy, only use Cricut Joy pens and markers. If you're using an Explorer Maker, only use the ones that don't say Joy on them. Uh... Lynn, I can see your comment. So yes, I can see your comment. Um, okay, I think that covers all the tips. Um, if you want to learn more about how to write, like with, in cards and stuff like that, I have a really in-depth tutorial. And let me just show you where it is because I don't remember the link to it. I'm going to go to my blog again and I'm going to show you. So, uh, oops, that's design space. Here we go. So I'm over here on my blog. Uh, it's a recent tutorial. So everything is arranged in reverse chronological order. So I was looking for it there. Uh, here it is, Cricut Writing in Cards and Envelopes. This is a really, really good tutorial that shows you how to write on envelopes and how to write inside cards, whether you made them yourself or you bought them at the store. This tells you all about how to pick fonts, how to change them to be writing fonts instead of like uh, the outlines, the bubble letters, how to avoid all the bubble letter thing. And it has our font in there, which is called the new one that we made just this year called JM Tall. And it's all free, right? Isn't it a cute font? I think it's so pretty. I've heard of many people who have used that font for their Christmas cards this year. All right, if you have any more questions, oh, I guess I should tell you where that, that blog that post is. It's at jennifermaker.com slash cricket dash writing dash fonts. But you can just go to jennifermaker.com and search for the word writing or the word pen or the word marker. And then you'll get all of our tutorials that we've ever done. That's the, that's the easiest way to find our things. All right, if you have any questions, 
um, please ask us. You can leave your question below this video, of course, but you can also come to our amazing Cricut Crafters group. It is at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. It's an awesome place to answer or to ask questions and get answers to them and get inspired and all that awesome stuff. 